just checked out uh, winepressnews.com here and uh, saw this article, but kind of the interesting one here, vaccination persuasion teams in Turkey <laughs> proved successful for big pharma, yeah. NFL team to cut players if they're not vaccinated. Not real surprising. But this one here I want to make a mention of. Okay, Texas mega church to offer COVID vaccines after the services. All right, you can read this article here. We're not going to go through the article. Uh, good stuff. But this guy here, um, Robert Jeffries, Pastor Jeffries, uh, he's a minister of Satan. No question about it. I've known this for years. This guy's wicked. Um, he's a Baptist pastor. Um, I have a theory, and I've had it for a while now, that a lot of these Baptist pastors are just Catholic. Is all that they are. And they're, they're masquerading as Baptists. And these guys, <clears throat> they will all come out, and they will say things against the Vatican to kind of win the trust of people. And then they'll come out later on and actually support Roman Catholicism. I'm going to show you proof of that here, but another man that's uh, supposedly a Bible-believing Christian will watch some of this here real quick. This man right here, Charles Lawson. He's supposed to be a King James Bible-believing preacher. Listen to what he says here in this sermon, Great is the Mystery of Godliness, April 19th, 2021. So not even a month ago. Okay, listen to what he says. Watch carefully. They didn't preach theory. They didn't preach church. They didn't preach catechism. And catechism fine. It has its place. Catechism is fine. It has its place. Oh, really? This is fine? It has its place? The Roman Catholic Catechism? It's fine. It has its place? Why didn't anybody call him out on that? Look down at the comments. I love you so much, Pastor Charles. Pray for me, brothers. A drug addiction, yeah, there. Uh, stay strong, Pastor Lawson. May God bless you. Uh, 100 out of 100, I guess, there. Um, awesome vessel there. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Pastor, in your minute. Stands there plainly and says, the catechism is fine. It's There's nothing wrong. You know, it's good to read. <laughs> And I called out this devil a while back, November 14th, 2018, for the statements that he made in this video. We're going to watch this thing real quickly. Um, again, just listen to what he says here. A brother made me aware of this, and it's kind of a little bit disturbing. Um, this thing of Charles Lawson here recently, this is uh, November 11th, just a few days ago, three days ago, this came out. And he said, Lawson mentions, you know, the Antichrist movement, the Antichrist system, and he does not say one word about, you know, the church, the universal church of the Antichrist. Watch this. That, in other words, America should be a globalist society, that embracing globalism, that all the world's going to have to come together in order for the world to prosper. Donald Trump, and he has many warts, believe me, he has many warts believe me but there's one thing I do believe I do believe that he loves this country and Donald Trump Donald Trump a trained Jesuit Fordham University his son went to Georgetown and his other son went to another Jesuit school I forget which one it was Trump is speaking okay and I want to add this too uh, now that Trump is out and now that we've seen what this man has done Trump um, he got this uh, you know, the thing of, of sending out all the stimulus checks and stimulating the economy and everything else. He was the one that was behind a lot of that. Over six trillion dollars. Um, I think uh, one of them or, or one or two of them or something like that. Um, that pushed the whole vaccination thing out there. So Trump is an evil man. Very evil man. Speaking in France this morning. And he has made it clear that he is a nationalist. In plain words, America comes first. Yeah, it's called uh, Donald Trump's an actor. Need a break. What does all this mean? In order for the Antichrist to come to power, he will have a universal language, he'll have a universal monetary system, he'll have a universal uh, military, and there will be a universal trade among not nation states anymore, globalist. 
A one world government is the foundation for the Antichrist. Uh, no, actually it isn't. According to the King James Bible, the whole world is going to worship the beast. You worship in church buildings. The Antichrist, the foundation for him is a universal church. And what is the universal church? Um, that would be Catholicism. Um, I can tell you from personal experience that Baptist preachers are scared to death to really come out hard against Roman Catholicism because they fear losing their building. And how can they really speak against Catholicism because all their practices go back to the catechism? The church building thing, the suit and tie, all that other stuff, that stuff. Okay, let me pause it there. Pause myself <laughs> speaking about this issue. Um, and we just heard Lawson say it's fine to read the catechism, it's good. Continue. That's not in the Bible. Where'd they get it from? They got it from the Catholic Church. All right? And, I, you know, I'm speaking from personal experience, literally. Uh, Country Chapel Baptist Church in Eldred, Pennsylvania, the pastor, uh, Bruce Ireland, told me, I was doing a prophecy conference, and he told me, he said, take it easy on the Catholics. And I brought it up later on in an argument with him, and he said, he said, I know a Baptist pastor that lost his church because he spoke against Catholicism. So, yes, Baptist preachers are afraid to speak against the Catholic Church. I find it interesting that Lawson just omits the universal church when that is the very system of the Antichrist. Okay? But this is, it gets worse. Here we have this thing, he's talking about the deity of Jesus Christ. Listen to this. Everything does, but basically that's what it is. And so the Council of Nicaea, somebody come along and say, well, all these councils, councils were Roman Catholic. Well, let me ask you a question. Have you read the Council of Nicaea? Have you read the, read the, read the, uh, the statement of the Council of Nicaea? Okay, here's the Nicene Creed. It goes down through here. And at the end it says, We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. Listen to what he says. Read it. I've read it many times. And I can't find one thing wrong with it. Now, there are other... I can't find one thing wrong with it. Well, then why is the word Catholic used? You say, well, brother, that just means universal. Yes, okay, the universal church of the Antichrist. Where's the word Catholic at in the King James Bible? It's not in there. It's a Greek philosophical word that existed before the first century, too, by the way. Right? Why would he say that? There's nothing wrong with the Nicene Creed. That is disturbing. But it gets worse other things that could have been added to it but what was said is as straight down the line as can be said straight down the line as can be said one holy catholic church and constantine convened that council and the reason he did is because he was a christian emperor <laughs> uh, constantine is a christian emperor did you see the pauls a, a christian emperor Constantine, the founder of Roman Catholicism, is a Christian. You just heard it. Lawson just said that Constantine is a Christian emperor. Theodosius was a Christian emperor. Constantine convened it, the Council of Nicaea, because he he's supposed to, at the Milvian Bridge, when he was... You just pause it there. I didn't say this in my video originally there, but you can see Lawson's very nervous. You can see as he's talking, he's, I, I kind of made a little point about that. He, he's a Christian emperor. He's very nervous with what he's saying because his true feelings are now coming out. He's truly saying what he really believes, and he knows people might spot this. And I did, and it, I got attacked like crazy, viciously attacked by his people and others that support him. You know, on YouTube, saying his people as in people that go to his satanic building there, but also the, his supporters on YouTube. They just savagely attacked me on this because I brought this out. Let's continue. When he was when he was fighting for control of the empire, he saw a cross in the in the heavens that said "By this conquer," and so Constantine took that as a message from God, and he did conquer, and he became the undisputed. Uh, 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 leader of the empire, and that's when he he uh, he officially he officially ended Christian persecution and declared it to be a a viable religion. 
Oh my word. I just knocked my headphones right off the back of my head. I mean, are you kidding me? Constantine ended Christian persecution. <coughs> Excuse me. Constantine brought together pagan things, pagan, you know, terminology and gave them Christian names. And he made a state church. He it's called syncretism. I didn't say that in the original video, but syncretism is what that's called. Combining the pagan stuff from Greek philosophers, Roman paganism and whatever, with Christian names. That's what the Catholic Church does. And they admit it. So he took Roman, you know, basically the Roman Empire, the Roman military presence, the Roman government, I should say it that way, and merged it with Christian concepts, thereby creating the Roman Catholic Church. And it, Lawson is saying this is all good stuff. He was a Christian. Oh, man. And that's why he called the Council of, of, of Nicaea. Now, do I know whether Constantine went to heaven or not? Well, I know this. I know the fruit of the Council of Nicaea. As far as what they stated, folks read it. It's right down the line. No it's right down the line. Yeah, called the broad path to destruction. I have been very, you know, I'm not going to take many stands or whatever else uh, against Lawson. And a lot of people said I've been blessed with him, whatever else. And, I, and I, people say, what do you think? And I just kind of, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not even going to judge the guy, okay? You judge him yourself, all right? Uh, why is he saying these things? I'll judge him, okay? I'll judge him now after seeing even more coming out and saying that the catechism is good to read and whatever else. He's a papist. He's on his way to hell. He's false. He's fake. He locked his church building down when the government said to. Again, I've brought that out. A real man wouldn't lock his church building down. He would just say, no, Jesus is the head of this. I'm sorry, I'm not locking it down. Especially over something that's, you know, so harmless as this supposed coronavirus, which is, hasn't even been proven to even exist. I'm not accusing the guy of anything because I get all that stuff put on me and whatever. Oh, you think everybody says this? Whatever, you know, whatever. Explain what he's saying here, okay? Just disgusting. Play a little bit more here. No problem with it. Now they got the Council of Chalcedon, the Council of Twos, and all these other councils. Sure, you got them all piled up one on top of another. But you got to remember something. The early church was in a dogfight over the truth of who Christ was. And that's. Okay, and then he gets into the thing of Tertullian and the whole creation of the Trinity and that, and he was doing God's work. Whatever. You can watch the rest of the thing yourself, but. Uh, uh, I'm never going to recommend this man again. Uh, quite frankly, I don't trust him one bit. Um, to say Constantine was a you know a Christian ruler and, and and he did good. He created the Catholic Church for goodness sake, and the Nicene Creed. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. Okay, so. Here we have this Pastor Jeffries guy that uh, the Wine Press Report is about, this sick devil right here. There's there's just devils in this guy. You can see it in his facial expressions when he's talking. It's just it's really weird, very bizarre. Watch what he says here. Pastor Jeffries reacts to being attacked as anti-Catholic. He is the pastor of one of the largest congregations in our country, but the left is rehashing an old accusation against Pastor Robert Jeffress, going as far as calling him anti-Catholic. Listen to this. I wanted to ask you about the president's tweet in which he called Pastor Robert Jeffress a wonderful man. Given that there are 70 million American Catholics, why would he say that about somebody who's so viciously anti-Catholic? Uh, I'm not aware of uh, Robert Jeffress being anti-Catholic. I know that he engages with uh, the Catholics in his home state on the regular basis uh, to participate in events like the March for Life. Uh, those are the only actions I've seen uh, him participate in. So I could. She's actually telling the truth there. He's not anti-Catholic. And comment any further on that. Uh, here to respond is the author of a new book called A Place Called Heaven, Fox News contributor and First Baptist Church pastor Robert Jeffress. Uh, good morning, you Pastor. Good morning. Good morning. I was watching that press briefing, and when uh, the reporter uh, said the thing about the anti-Catholic bias, I was going, what are they talking about? Can you explain <laughs> why uh, some feel that you're anti-Catholic? 
Absolutely. This all started Friday night when I was on Lou Dobbs' show defending the president against these unwarranted attacks by that wacko congresswoman. And after I finished the show, the president was gracious to tweet out some words of support for me and for my new book, A Place Called Heaven, that I had given him a few weeks ago. That's when the left pounced what on makes, me. What, and they, how does that make you anti-Catholic? Well, what they did was, Steve, they went back and recycled some old quotes from years ago that were either completely manufactured at the time or ripped out of context. And <laughs> completely manufactured, ripped out of context. All right, let's let's uh, check those out. This is the Babylonian mystery religion that spread like a cult throughout the entire world. The high priest of that fake religion, that false religion, the high priests of that religion would wear crowns uh, that resembled the heads of fish. And uh, that was in order to worship the fish god, Dagon. And on those crowns were written the words, uh, Keeper of the Bridge, the, pri the bridge between Satan and man. That phrase, Keeper of the Bridge, the Roman equivalent of it is Pontifex Maximus. It was a title that was first carried by uh, the Caesars and then the emperors and finally by the Bishop of Rome, Pontifex Maximus, the keeper of the bridge. You can see where we're going with this. It is that Babylonian mystery religion that infected the early church. One of the churches that infected was the church at Pergamos, which is one of the recipients of the book of the Revelation. And the early church was corrupted by this Babylonian mystery religion. And today, the Roman Catholic Church is the result of that corruption. Much of what you see in the Catholic Church today doesn't come from God's Word. It comes from this cult-like pagan religion. Uh, you say, well, now, Pastor, how can you say such a thing? That is such an indictment of the Catholic Church. After all, the Catholic Church talks about God and the Bible and Jesus and the blood of Christ and salvation. Isn't that the genius of Satan? You know, if you want to counterfeit a dollar bill, you don't do it with purple paper and red ink. You're not going to fool anybody with that. But if you want to counterfeit money, what you do is make it look as closely related to the real thing as possible. And that's what Satan does with counterfeit religion. He uses, he steals, he appropriates all of the symbols of true biblical Christianity, and he changes it just enough in order to cause people to miss eternal life. Okay. He's actually describing himself. So... Over here, he just lied, flat out lied, about what he said back there. A couple years later and things. But, you know, these, these guys, he's just reading that information from Babylon's, or uh, Hislop's two Babylon's or whatever, you know. Um, <laughs> they'll come out and they'll do a sermon like that, and then they, they backpedal. John Hagee did the same thing years ago, called uh, Roman Catholicism Mystery Babylon, and later, oh, well, you know, I, was, I, I didn't really mean that, <laughs> you know. Well, let's just what let's watch this lie again here. You just heard him what he said. Well, what they did was, Steve, they went back and recycled some old quotes from years ago that were either completely manufactured at the time or ripped out of context. And let me be clear, I've said this repeatedly. I love my Catholic brothers and sisters in Christ. We march alongside one another and write to I again. love my Catholic brothers and sisters in Christ. We march alongside Catholic brothers and sisters in Christ. They preach a different gospel. If they're your brothers and sisters in Christ, then it's in the Antichrist first off, and you're not saved. Roman Catholicism sends people to hell. They don't preach the gospel. He's admitting that he's lost. I mean, what more do these Baptist pastors have to do? I mean, you get Gene Kim, you know, when he's worshiping in a Catholic building, you know, holding his Baptist church uh, services in a Catholic building. He's, I mean, I guess they'll just have to come out in a, in a priest outfit. You probably still have, you know, their faithful supporters saying, I don't think he's a Catholic. <laughs> Incredible. Finish up here.
alongside one another in right to life marches. We work alongside one another in religious liberty causes. And just this past Sunday, I invited Sean Hannity, a Catholic himself, to our church. He spoke, and I said to Sean and our entire congregation that I believe that millions of Catholics are going to be in heaven because of their faith in Christ. These attacks are nothing more than an attempt to discredit the president by discrediting his most vocal and visible evangelical supporter, and these attacks are not going to diminish my support for him by one iota. What do you say to the critics that were... No, no, what a stinking faker. I mean, you can just hear the voice, the, the little staged voice that these guys put on. I, I mean, fry in hell. Well, no, disgusting. I'm upset with you being on the campaign trail with the president yesterday. Well, it's interesting. I was with the president last night at a, a campaign event here in Dallas, and uh, he asked me halfway through his speech to come up on stage and talk to the group. And I explained to the group why I believe and continue to believe in President Trump. And I noted to the group that, look, the economy is booming. The stock market is rising. The economy is booming. <laughs> yeah, okay. America has been going down ever since 2008. We're going down the toilet. Okay, any real economist will tell you that. Oh, it's not on the. It's not a prostitute for the mainstream media. Oh, what a devil! Oh, what a stinking devil! I mean, even just just think about this for a minute. Okay, let's just say he just believes the records and whatever. Okay, what about the Bible? Does the Bible say that the economy will be booming in the end times? No, the Bible says that there's a mark of the beast system. How do you have the mark of the beast? by crashing the other economies. All the world's required to take the mark of the beast. That can't happen with strong economies all over the earth. Oh, he's a Bible-believing preacher. We're a strong economy. What a devil. These uh, Russian investigations, they're turning against Hillary Clinton, and the president's approval rating are at the same level they were on election day. No wonder the Democrats are in full panic mode. People know that okay. the tide is turning toward President Trump. All right, uh, Pastor, thank you very much. Uh, joining us live from Dallas to answer thank the you. allegations. Just thank love you, having you on. Thank you, Pastor Jeffrey. <laughs> just love having you on, Pastor Jeffrey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we just love you. Uh, yeah, when the world loves you, yeah, I don't think you're right with the Lord. Yeah. So, just want to make a video about this. But, you know, this guy's obviously a devil. But, you know, Lawson, I, I mean, come on. Read the catechism. You know, uh, over here, you know, he's first. You know, the Nicene Creed's great. Constantine's a Christian. Uh, don't know if he'll be in heaven, but he was a Christian man. Get away from the Baptists, you know. Sorry, but you just you just need to get away from the Baptists uh, altogether. The IFB is just is filled with these closet Catholic Baptists. Um, they're just disgusting. I've seen it, you know, for so many years. So, be coming out with more videos in the future. But I just thought, okay, I need to get this out because of this article on Wine Press and uh, just disgusting. Thank you for watching.